Hi, I'm Tony Stefani with Hillside Christmas Tree Farm. In our last video of this series, I gave you an overview of the problem we're seeing in our Canaan fir field. Now, let's dive deep and see what could be going on with this field. There are three tools that we can use to diagnose tree soil and nutrient problems. They are soil surveys, soil tests, and foliar samples. In general, you should start with a soil survey and soil testing because you need to understand what is currently in the ground before you can start looking at what the tree is actually taking. So let's start with the USDA soil survey. Then we can take a look at the soil test. All right, if we Google USDA soil survey, we can see what the rib results and we can click on the first link. From here, we'll click on the start WSS module and then we'll bring up the soil survey program once we're here, we're going to zoom into our farm. And we'll keep zooming in until we kind of line up the main area that we're interested in. All right, here's our field that we're after. We're going to center this up and then we're going to use this AOI tool to create kind of the area of interest and we will highlight this section of field. We'll go up top and we'll check out our soil map. Here's our soil map and we kind of see that that outline is kind of the exact trouble area that we're seeing in the field. Some of the tools now that we can see is uh, the different soil types. We see PE. We can click on that description over on the left and we can kind of gives us some more information about that type of soil. We see there's a lot of clay. Clay doesn't necessarily help with um, fur and we see that it's not very, uh, it doesn't drain very well. It holds water very, yeah, there's our drainage class, very poorly drained, all right? Depth to water table about zero to 12 inches. Uh, I think in here somewhere it says kind of frequent to ponding. So we can see that this, this soil isn't exactly the best for growing Christmas trees. Again, this is one of the tools that you can use for kind of getting an idea of what your soils in your field look like. In Michigan, I know we have a big variety of soils. So this is a neat tool. It was very interesting to see that the soil type line basically circled the problem for us. My big takeaways from the soil survey are... First, there's a lot of clay, and second, the site is poorly drained. I personally haven't seen any lasting puddles in the field, but with a water table of 8 to 12 inches, those trees might not be reaching down as far as they want and just growing out along the surface. Anyway, since we aren't going to change the soil profile, we will see what we can do with soil amendments. Let's review the soil test. Someone in one of the Facebook groups might mentioned Spectrum Analytic located in Ohio for testing, so I tried them. After using them, I really like the online dashboard they have where I can change my desired crop and see the fertilizer recommendations based on that new crop. An example of this is I'm going to try pumpkins this year, and the soil test I took for my 2021 planting is very close to the same field I want to do pumpkins in. So I went to the dashboard, changed my crop to pumpkins, and got my recommendations for pumpkins. Pretty easy. All right, let's review the soil test results from this problem area. So this is a uh, screenshot of the soil test result, again, from Spectrum Analytic, located in Ohio. So to start, just some generic uh, things about the soil test. Up top, we see a result and the optimal range for our selected crop. When you send this test in, you're kind of telling the soil lab what crops you plan on planting. So, and the optimal section is based, is specific to those crops that you listed. In the analysis, we see the different uh, things that they tested. This is the basic test, and these are the results that they're testing for and that you get. Well, below that, we see a graph representing your results, then comparing that to the levels for high, medium, low, for the optimal crop that you're planting, in this case, is Christmas trees. Below the graph, we see the crops and the recommended rates based on the soil test. And lastly, we see with sulfur uh, not to apply more than a certain amount a year. All right, so let's start with 
kind of analyzing my soils here in that pond area where we're seeing the issues. But starting with the soil pH, we see that optimal range for fur is 5.4 to 6, and we're at 7.5, which is extremely high. Right? We need to bring the soil pH down. Now you ask yourself, how do you do that? Well, in some of the soil books and lessons, you know that elemental sulfur can bring it down. Now that is a function of where you're starting your pH and where you want to go, and also the cation exchange capacity of the soil, which as I understand it is just the soil's ability to kind of hold and retain nutrients in the soil and not make them available to the tree. So in our soil test, we see that we have a cation exchange capacity of 16.6. So back on this chart, we're starting at about 7.5, and we want to go somewhere between 5.5 five and 6. I would probably more tend to easier to get 6 than 5.5. Five. So based on that, they're wanting us to put down over 1,000 pounds of sulfur an acre. That might be a little much based on its recommendations of not more than 300 a year, so this is obviously going to take some time to drive this soil down. And it is what it is. Uh, the soil is like this because it's clay, and clay kind of kind of does that, has that effect on soils. All right, moving on, we see that all of our other nutrients are also well below the optimal range, so we have to bring all those up. So overall, what we learned here is that this wasn't a really good place to plant fur. In general, I found that the higher the CEC, the more clay in the soil. We know we're dealing with a lot of clay because of the soil survey. Also notice, the lower the CEC value, the less sulfur needed to lower the pH. All right, now that we know the soil type and the current nutrient levels, we can develop our fertilizer plan. So stay tuned as I develop that plan in my next video. Thanks for watching.